soaring like eagles. And um, I'm going to list several attributes of an eagle and, and see what the spiritual connotation is. But, you know, it's funny how, well, it's not funny, but the scriptures is, is awesome because in, in the scriptures, God likens us to several things in the natural so that we can draw a parallel or metaphors for what he's doing in our life, will do, has done. And, um, and he says several things. I, I like a couple of things. He said one thing, he, he called us sheep. You know, I know a soul. I don't really like being called likened to a sheep. Because sheep are not the most, you know, people, things in the world. But sometimes we act like sheep. And then um, he, said, he, he said one place, he said we're like branches on a vine. Didn't he? He said we're like uh, trees planted by the rivers of water that bring forth his fruit in the season. He said, what else he said? We're like, uh, he said, we're like bold lions. Lions don't back down from stuff. There's, n there's nothing, that, <laughs> nothing that a lion is afraid of. That's who, that's who we are. That's our DNA. Boldness. Hallelujah. Well, one of the things he said is that we're like eagles. And so I want to focus on the eagle today and then see how it, it translates into um, what God wants it to translate to because he sees us as eagles. Are there any eagles in the house this morning? Um, okay. Okay. The Lord is worthy. The Lord is worthy. Okay. So, you know what? You know, I, one of the things I'm glad that God didn't pick out of the bird kingdom and say I was like was a chicken. Or turkey. <laughs> he said, we're like eagles. And there's like, you know, there's like 70 species of eagles. And Isaiah was talking about the eagle, called, I think it was the golden eagle in that region of the world. And that dude, that, that eagle, wingspan is like nine feet. Nine feet, man. And, and he can carry stuff, you know, the size of a man. Well, some men. He can, you know... <laughs> They're, they're huge. I mean, you know, their their body weight. They can carry their body weight, you know, and and they're remarkable creatures. So I want to talk about a couple of them. I'm not going to go through all of them. Um, that would take me about six weeks. I don't want to deal with all of that. You can Google and look up stuff all you want. But um, Isaiah chapter 40, and um, and this, like I said, this kind of goes along with uh, some things that we praised God for earlier. Verse 29. That God gives power to the weak and to those who have no might, hmm, He increases strength. You ever run to people to say, Man, I, I just, I'm just out of gas? Okay, well, you need to take them over here. Even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. But those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up, mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. I want to, we're not going to use a whole lot of scripture today, but I do want to look at this in a couple other translations. I always like to look at about four or five translations and just get another view. It says in the New Living, he gives power to the weak and strength to the powerless. Even youth become weak and tired. And young men will fall into exhaustion. But those who trust in the Lord will find new strength. And they will soar high on wings like eagles. That's what I'm talking about today, soaring like an eagle. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not faint. Next translation, please. He energizes those who get tired. I just, hold on, keep that up there. Let me take a quick survey. Is there anybody here that's tired? you out of strength. It's okay to me. You're not going to hell if you say, I'm tired and got no strength. Well, maybe I need to preach something else. The first group were tired. Maybe. Okay. Okay. Uh, yeah. He energizes those who get tired. He gives fresh strength to drop out. For even young people tire and drop out. Young folks in their prime 
stumble and fall. But those who wait upon the Lord get fresh strength. They spread their wings and soar like eagles. They run and don't get tired. They walk and don't lag behind. Do you feel like a lowly worm? I want to talk about, I want to talk about that. Not about that, but that's my, my, uh, my script. And now, God is using an ego as a physical example of what we have spiritual entitlements to. What do you mean by that? Well, he's using the ego, and I'm going to talk about some of the physical things, but he's saying, and, and we all know, we all know how majestic an eagle is, how special an eagle is. I'm, I, I used to be fascinated by him. I, and one time I had, I still do, I pictures of eagles everywhere. I got eagles at my house, eagles in, in here. I got, I got statues of eagles. I got eagles. I got one eagle at the house, his head, he fell. And his head, he doesn't have a head. But I still got him because his, his wings are like that. But they're majestic creatures. But this is an example of what God says I have spiritually and am entitled to. God says, I know you get tired. I know you want to quit. I know... I know people drop out. I know, I know you're not energized. I know that. She don't have to put one of those on. I can, I can look at hers. Oh, she handed her a thing for her legs. Huh? See, see, I just get messed up. I'm messing with them. I messed with him. She just turned 42 yesterday. So, you know, she, okay. Yeah, these birthday, these older people, they just think they can just do stuff. In this. But God, God knows that there are times we, get, we lose our energy, there are times we get tired, and there are times we actually want to quit, and sometimes we do quit. But he says we don't have to. We can be like the eagles. And then he goes on to say, he'll renew our youth like the eagle. But there's some other things about the eagle. The eagle, you know, though he can soar like that, he soars with effort that just looks like he's on a string. And that speaks to me that, okay, God, you know, I can soar without stress, strain, and struggle because of because of my, my spiritual DNA, I have the attributes of an eagle. Let's look at a couple of them. <laughs> Woo. All right. Now, the eagle, I call him the master aviator. Why? Because he was born to soar. He was born to soar. And, you know, normally it's the mother who teaches the eagle how to, uh, eagle how to, how to, how to fly. But, but he finds out very quick he was born to soar, that it's inherent in him to soar, that God put it in him to soar, to rise above. He's not some chicken. All chicken do with them crazy self, all chicken do is they, they don't even look up, man. They got their mind on the ground and what's in the ground. And eagles like, oh no, I don't do chicken. I don't do chicken. I got the soar, man. I got the I need some space so I can so I can climb and climb and soar into the heavenly. Soar into the things that God has set aside. Soar where a whole lot of other birds can there's no other bird that can soar with an eagle. But God said, so, so, so we have that in us. God put in every one of us, every one of you, the ability to soar higher than your circumstances. He put in every one of us. We're not chicken. We don't have to hang out with chicken. We don't have to keep looking down, pecking and picking stuff up. We can look up and see who our Redeemer is and what God has brought into our lives. It's in us. That's why a lot of times we don't want to listen to somebody because it's in me to dominate. 
It's in me to rise up. It's in me to be better. Do you listen? Are you listening to me? See, we don't like boundary. Why? Because it's in me, just like that that eagle. It's in me to soar. It's in me to go higher. One of the things the ego does, you know, storm. Everybody say storm. The storms of life come to all of us. Everybody in here, you're gonna have a storm. Or you're gonna have a series of them. But don't be saying that over me, Pastor. I ain't got to say it. Jesus said it. I'm just repeating what Jesus said. Jesus said, in this life, you're going to have test, trial, tribulation. But then he said this. What? What did he say? Be of good cheer. Why? I've overcome. You have the ability in you to overcome. Now, a, 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 an eagle, see, this is why I love it. He said, an eagle, they, they, when they sense a storm, they, they, well, they can actually sense it and see a storm, but they don't, they don't run from storms. They don't run and hide from storms. All the other birds, they run around trying to get shelter. Chickens run around the same place. And <laughs> you watch them chickens. I never raised them, but we, we were living in a the place, they had chickens. And them chickens are different. <laughs> but, but, so they run, they run for shelter. But an eagle, the same storm that caused chickens and turkeys and other birds to run for shelter is the same storm that causes him to go to new heights and new levels. He doesn't run from storms because he understands, oh, this is just going to take me somewhere I haven't been yet. And so when the winds of the storm come, the Bible says, the Bible doesn't say it, but, but he said, mount up the wings of the eagle. What he does is he locks his wings and he waits for that wind. Like double dutch, yeah. <laughs> he he waits. He waits for that wind. And then when, when that, that right gust comes, he jumps out there. And he may flap one time, but he, he locked the wind. And the and the wings of adversity, the winds of adversity, the pressures of adversity, that pressure coming in on him. Oh, it doesn't take him down. Oh, oh no. What is it? He may go like this. And that thing just lifts him up. It lifts him up. And he just flies over. Ha uh, holla. What's up? He look, everybody else, them chickens down there running around, running around. But he, he just, he, and see, the storm doesn't bother him. In fact, he gets excited about the storm because he uses the current and the pressure to lift him up to go where God wants to take him. And, and he just effortlessly, too. And he does it until, until he needs to come down and, and get down and eat something. But God says, see, the pressures of life, they're not your enemy. It's not always the devil. One of the things, I, I put this in here. See, one of the things the eaglets do when they, when they, and I'm, <laughs> that when they make the nest, that sometimes the nest big enough for me to lay down in. And so they, they layer the nest with all kind of stuff. Layer the nest, they layer it, and then next, it's initially nice and soft. But then at the eagle, it's time to learn how to fly and soar. The mother will start taking stuff off, the soft stuff, and start revealing the thorns and the, the old ripple bottles and stuff, that's, stuff that will stick them and make them the eagle uncomfortable. You know why? So that because sometimes we get so stuck in a comfort zone, we just feel like this is the way I live. And God and the eagle, the, the mother said, "Oh no, baby, you created the soar, not not to co not to habitate in a nest. This is just a stopping ground for you." And so she started making it a little uncomfortable, so that every time he said, "Oh, uh oh, what was that?" And then and then she then she tricks him every now and then, and then she just push him out. <laughs> but she doesn't want him. She doesn't want him comfortable in the nest. Well, sometimes God's got to stir some stuff up in your nest. You better listen to me. Sometimes God's got to stir some stuff up in your nest because you're too comfortable. God said, listen, I want you to soar, but you're too comfortable sitting on your blessed assurance. Jesus is mine. He said, so, so he'll start moving stuff out. He'll start agitating you and poking you. Think, ah, I rebuke you. I rebuke you. God said, no, don't rebuke, baby. Don't rebuke. I'm trying to get you to grow. I'm trying to get you to get out of this comfort zone because you, you, you're much bigger than this. Are you listening to me? 
So the ego has to be pushed out. And so God said, that's the way I do with my children. They get all irritated, but I'm just trying to make them grow. See, some God even brings people in your life. They're sandpaper people. They get the rough edges off of you. And you, you trying, Lord, you need to move me because I ain't done. I ain't done. I only, I only got two sides done. I got two more sides to go. <laughs> ego. Okay, let me give you a couple more things quick. So, so the ego is not scared of the storm. They're not intimidated, and no, neither should you be. Eagles are not concerned about what's causing the storm because they know how to take advantage of the storm. They, the eagles say, all this is working for my good. Paul said it this way, these light afflictions work for a far more greater eternal weight. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, okay, like an eagle. Here's another attribute. Eagles fly alone. Eagles fly. You won't see eagles flying with sparrows or ravens or robins, or blue jays. Eagles only fly with eagles. Every now and then you'll see some eagles together. That's why I like to go down to Homer. And uh, I love going down there. I get out there early in the morning and walk the coastline. I mean, one time I walked there with a bunch of eagles out there on the tree. I was like, they're going to move when I get up there. I walked right by them. They're like, what? I said, okay, I'll walk around there. I'll just walk around. <laughs> it was you too. But, but I didn't see any, any of them, uh, them white birds. What's them things that be? Yeah, seagulls. I didn't see none of them with them. And if you look in the air, eagles only run with eagles. You don't normally see a whole group of them, but you don't see them mingling. They recognize I'm working on something and I'm going somewhere. I can't afford to be hanging with no birds. I can't be down there in the barnyard talking about, they just talking about worms and stuff. <laughs> Bugs and grasshoppers. I ain't got time for that. <laughs> now, what's the spiritual application? Your association is critical. See, some of y'all, y'all trying, y'all want a sword, but you running with birds. You running with turkey. Turkey can't get, they can make it one little hop. That's about all they got. A bird get one little hop. And, the, and, 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 and but your, your association, your association is so important because, see, you can't think like eagles, talk like eagles, fly like eagles if you don't hang with eagles. So you need to evaluate your, your, who you're running. Because you, if you're on a soar, and I, I tell you, I tell you it, it, it will separate you, it will bring you to a class. Because, see, eagles, people who soar has hunters. They attract hunters. And hunters are those who try to bring opposition to keep you from soaring where you need to soar. Yeah. And those who say, I'm going to soar like an eagle, all of a sudden now, you bring out those who are like, see, and they're thinking eagles, eagles really don't care because they get so high, they get so far that they, they don't even hear this stuff anymore. And that's why you got to hang with other eagles because other eagles will say, oh man, don't, don't, even, don't, even, don't even sweat that. But if you were other birds, did you hear what so-and-so said about you? Do you know what they said about you? If it was me, I wouldn't do this. See, that's the way birds talk. That's the way turkeys talk. Eagles don't talk like that. Eagles say, man, come on, we can do this. Eagles say, yeah, you are the man. Yes, you are. Yes, yeah, 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 you look just like Tiger Woods. Yes, you can do this. Eagles will pump you up. Eagles will encourage you. Eagles will like, listen, it's like this. This is how we do it. Birds. Complain, talk about folks, and just to make themselves look better, eagles only fly with eagles. If you want to soar, you got to make sure you got somebody to know how to soar. Whew, how can you soar above the storm if you're hanging out with the birds? Okay, these are just a few attributes that God gives us. Okay, and I say when you dare to soar, when you dare to soar, you cannot let other people bring you down to a lower level. What that boy saying in that song? My level too high. How'd that go? My level too high. 
bring me down. Level too high to bring me down. I'm practicing for the 70s. Yeah, he said, he said, yeah, my level too high. You can't bring me down. You know, and that's like, well, Carly, that doesn't sound. No, 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 no. For an eagle, you get to the point where your level is so high, the bird can't get up there to bring you down. You can't bring me down. My level is too high. So we don't see see the opposition, you know, and, and, and the opposition, the ego, they thought say, that's illogical. Oh, they call you arrogant. Illogical. He he that's not rational. Eagles are so far up in the rarefied stratosphere of God's best, they're like, I don't even pay care. There ain't nothing in the Bible logical. It wasn't nothing logical about that girl having that baby without a man. What's logical about that? Logical, but what's logical about people walking on the water? Ain't nothing logical about that. But eagles think like that. They think out the box. They think we can do this. So, attributes of an eagle. Watch this. Here's another one. Eagles, eagles, um, eagles have strong vision. They have the ability to focus on something up to three miles. Some of them three miles away. I'm talking about a little rodent. I'm talking about a little snack. For three miles away, they can see a rodent. But what they do, though, they have this vision, and they have a 200, 270 degree peripheral. But oh man, they're able to to focus and lock in on their prey or their target, and not be moved by anything else around them. They say, "Now I'm going. At, that's what I want." Oh boy, I'm about to have some. That's what I want, and nothing on God green earth going to stop me from getting what I'm after. God said, we're like spiritual eagles, man. You have the ability to focus until you accomplish, until you receive, until you reach your destiny. You can focus, man. And so he said, when you do that, nothing will be impossible for you. Because nothing can distract you from three miles off. Eagles, you can start to see things other people can't see. So I don't care if, if, you, if I mention I'm going to do this. And you're like, oh, I don't believe that. I don't care what you believe. You don't see what I see. I can see the invisible so I can do the impossible. I don't care what you see. I don't expect you to see it. I don't expect you. He, I see it. So eagle can see. What can you see? Bird. You know what birds see? You know what? You know what chickens see? <laughs> so, so don't be, don't concern yourself with the criticism of a chicken. They can't see what you see. They can't even look up and see. They can't see. They can't see nothing except for what's in front of them. So, so I'm amazed how, some, how, how sometimes we spend so much attention on what other folks think. Yeah. They chicken, they, they can't see what you see. Don't you, your level too high to be brought down. So what do we say so far? They, they, they love the storm. The storm, they're not scared of the storm. We can't be scared of storms. We're not trying to get out of storm, we use them. Adversity is a concentrated classroom. You learn about God, you learn about the devil, you learn about you. And you learn about other people. In adversity. One thing eagles do, they test before they trust. They test before they trust. You know how they do that? Um, you know, when a female eagle wants to get with this well, when a dude eagle wants to get with the honey eagle, she said, okay, Charles, but I hear what you're saying. It's the eagle talking. But I got I to gotta see if you're serious. This is true, though, what I'm saying about the, uh, they trust. They test before they trust. What a female eagle does for somebody who wants to mate with them and, you know, make a family, she, she gets a twig and she flies really high and she just takes off shoo, and the dude like hey shoo. so he goes up with it and all of a sudden she drops the twig and he go 
Oh, okay. Be right back. And he gives her the twig. And she's like, oh, okay, Charles. <laughs> this is true. This is true. This is what the scientists say. I don't know. I ain't watch them. So, and so, so, so she, she goes up to a whole nother height. Pew! And he goes, oh, you ain't said nothing? Pew! And so he right behind her, right? They just, they just, and then all of a sudden she go, and he go, oh. And they say this goes on for hours. Hours. And then and then and then she goes as far as she can go. And he does the same thing. When he brings it back, after hours, she says, Wow, you got some ability. And then she says, I think you're ready to make a commitment to me. They test before they trust. I said to myself, I want a baby woman. Some of y'all need to go get a twig. <laughs> Some of y'all need to go get a twig. Forget what he's saying, go get a twig. Ego test before they, before they trust. Remember I was teaching a couple weeks ago about how older people, older people, you know, we filter some things out. That's one of the things I learned. Test before you trust. Watch them. I'm watching some of y'all. I'm watching. I ain't saying that. I'm going to watch them before I trust. Okay. So, okay. I think, is that it? No. It is? Yeah. Oh, no, 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 no. Okay. I said they have vision. Oh, thank you. <laughs> okay. The last thing I want to bring out about an ego is that they have a picky they're picky about what they eat. Typically, they don't feed, they really don't feed on dead things that much. They're like fresh prey. And the correlation and the thing we want to draw from that is, see, your diet, your spiritual diet is very critical. Eagles are picky. We need to be picky about what we allow into our minds over and over and over. We need to be picky, selective about who, even when you come to, what church you go to, you got to be selective about who speaks into your heart. You can't just go listen to everybody, you know. Okay, I'll say that. You just can't open yourself up to anybody and everybody. You, again, back to association, you can't you can't allow anybody to just feed you anything. Your spiritual diet and nutrition is critical if you want to soar like an eagle. Okay. Y'all good? Okay, now, here's my, what I've been wanting to get to. Whew. Let's go back to verse 31. But those who wait on the Lord shall do what? They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run, not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. One of the translations said, um, new strength. How many of y'all can use some new strength? How many you can you can use some strength to, that'll keep you running? All right, for the next few moments, he's telling me my youth can be renewed like the eagles. I didn't go into how a, a eagle at some point will go to a very high place and just pluck all his feathers out and all of that and, and it's a symbolic or it's also part of his renewing process because they'll all grow back and he can fly better, fly higher and all of that. Renew like the eagle. God is saying there's something in your DNA as a born again as a born again person 
where you can just continually be rejuvenated, renewed, restored, re-energized, and all of that. It's available to us. Now, but here he tells us how to get it. All of that is available. We have access to all the stuff we just talked about, the eagle, all of that's ours. But the access is in verse 31. Those who wait on the Lord. Those who wait on the Lord shall renew. They'll mount up like eagles to be just like that eagle we talked about. The waiting part is what gives us access to the strength, to the, to the energy, to the spiritual stamina. I believe in supplements. I take a whole bunch of them. I believe in working out and massages and stress busters. I, I believe in all of that. But I'm not going to give my youth renewal credit or dependent on all the stuff I can put inside. Because God is saying, I will give you something that's come from the inside that manifests on the outside. And you'll be able to run circles around even some young fellas who's dependent on all of their ability. You'll be able to outthink people who've been trained to think in, uh, in certain areas. And I'll bring, I'll bring a renewal. I'll bring a strengthening in your life where you won't back off and drop out and where you won't get weary and tired and, 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 and ineffective and, and just, just a bump on a log. He said there's something available to us that will cause us, my God, that will cause us to be strong. See, God, it's not God's will for us to get weaker as we go, but we're to be stronger as we go. This is one of the reasons why you see so many, so many, I call them spiritual dropout. I, I, I was calling them that before I saw the scripture. But see, what happened? People get tired. People get weary. People, people are like, ah, this is too much. I, this Christian thing is too hard. What? You got to be kidding me. Hard. Do you know what's hard? Sit down. Let me tell you what's hard. You haven't seen hard. God would not think about it. God is a loving, good daddy better than any of us ever had, ever will have, ever been. How's he going to give you something too hard for you to do? He's saying, Listen, I'm, I'm, I'm showing you, you'll be just like that eagle, you can soar. He, didn't, he never intended for us to, to soar and then fall down to the barnyard. He, come, he said, you soar and soar some more. And every test and trial and everything else, you just put a notch on your belt and you got what's called experience. And experience births hope. And so, and so, he said, the key is waiting. On me. There's supernatural strength to the person. Supernatural power, strength to the person that will wait on God. Paul said this. He said, my sufficiency, my ability, my qualification is not of myself. I'm not, you look at me, I know I ain't qualified. I know I ain't qualified. But that ain't my qualification. Thank God my qualification is not based on your criteria. My qualification is from God. It's the my sufficiency, my ability. I do what I do. He said, I am what I am by the grace of God. See, a lot of people try to do what they do, especially spiritual activity, whatever. They try to do it in their own strength. This is why we see a lot. I, was, I told you about this person I talked. Did I tell you about the person I talked to the other day? But and he, I said, man, how come we're in the church? And I told him, and he, he told me, I'm not even gonna repeat that. I'm not even gonna repeat repeat what he said. But I wish he had said this. I would have felt better. And I would have accepted it if he would have said. I said, how come you're not in church anymore? You don't know. I wish he would have said something like this. Twinkle, twinkle. <laughs> Little star, how I, come on, sing it if you know it, wonder <laughs> what you are. It would have made, made more sense had he said that than what he said. Now, I'm not, I would tell you what he said, but I don't want to incriminate anybody. <laughs> Amen. But here's the deal. Think about it. 
Why do some people, and, and, you know, and some of y'all sitting here, you, you used to be on fire. That's all we saying. Lord, don't let the fire go out. Why is the fire going out of so many saints? Because they were trying to do stuff in their own ability. That can only last so long. They, that thing has an expiration date. The battery goes down on that. You got to change the battery. But, but God said, I will renew your youth like the eagle. I won't just recharge you. I'll give you a new strength. A, a strength you didn't have before. And so a lot of people, I, I was telling my wife, y'all can go to this. There's a website called pastorburnout.com. What? Yeah, I was telling her, I said, there's a website called pastorburnout.com. Go to it. Y'all go to it, check it out. Don't go while I'm, while I'm preaching. I'm like, oh, okay. Pastor told me to go to it. But you'll see some things. You, you, it'll help. The only reason I said it, you, it'll help you understand some of the things pastors and, and their wives and their family go through that you don't even think about unless, you, unless you, your daddy, mama's a pastor, y'all, you up in church. But you don't think about some of the stuff. 1,500 pastors quit every month, they said. Just quit. I'm done. Large, large percentage of them. I'm burnt out. I'm done. Stick a fork in me. Pastors, doctors, lawyers. All in the same class. Have more drug abuse, suicides. What's that other one I said this morning? Alcohol abuse. Doctors, lawyers, and preachers. We had more people, more preachers commit suicide last year. I ever seen, I mean, it was a bunch of them. Why? What causes you to go to the edge like that? You can only do, now I'm, this is not meant to be a downer, but it's a, because we talk about how to, how to avoid it. Because see, there's a lot of saints in the church that's burnt out. I don't want to go to church no more. You know, we, all, we have it all the time in this church. I, 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 got, to, I got to stop serving. I got to stop serving. Because I'm, I'm going through. Oh, we, I mean, we're all going through. <laughs> we're all going through something. Come on. Come on. The Bible says there's no temptation that would take you that's not common to man. You're not the only one going through that. If I was up here could tell everybody business, you'd be like, oh, shoot, all right, man, here, my, like, I'm going to keep my hand in. I'm going to keep mine. <laughs> we, but, okay, I was going to make a point. Okay, so, so you got all these doctors and lawyers, preachers, man, you know, killing themselves, drinking themselves, going home Sunday evening, all kind of stuff. Go to that website. The wives, the wives can't stand nobody. The kids hate everybody. And then you got folks, you got preachers dying early. Y'all ain't killing me. I ain't, <laughs> I ain't, y'all ain't killing me. <laughs> no, really, I mean, you know, you know, some, 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 some. <laughs> but why? Because you can only go on your strength so long. You got to renew your strength. Thanks to God. All of you that, see, some of you used to be on fire. You had a fire. And that fire went out. Why? Because you, you come to the end of yourself. You don't, ha you don't have any more energy. You don't have any more fire. And I'll tell you what. I'm not prophesying. I'm not the prophet of doom and gloom. But, but if you keep trying to do something spiritual things in your own strength ain't no telling what you do some people lose their mind because the pressure is so great if you don't tap into the new strength that God has your resistance to sin your resistance to destruction it, it becomes almost non-existent you find yourself doing stuff you never thought you would do and, and again can I, I'm going to get off the preachers get on the saints If the fire goes out, I can't, I can't soar. And see, 
and keep, and then, oh boy, y'all listening real good. Maybe I should have, maybe I should have brought something called the symptoms of your fire going out. The symptoms of you coming to the end of yourself. Well, a couple of them are simple. Even coming to church is a, is a, it's a task. Give me a break. I ain't got to do come and sit down. Say a couple of hallelujahs and <laughs> praise the Lord and that's all you got to do. <laughs> but see, when you're tired, when you have, when you at the end of your own strength, everything is a big deal. I can't blame. They don't even speak to me. I can't believe. See, that's why I don't like them people on the front row. They think they all that. You know, you, that's their chicken. That's their chicken. <laughs> Eagles ain't concerned about what, what's happening on the ground. Amen. When your strength is gone, you can't even be the husband you're supposed to be. You're doing it in your own strength. That woman, girl, you crazy. You know how the women, they change everything. I don't feel this way today. But that worked last week. It ain't working now. <laughs> that was last week, Hoss. That was last week. But, but, but no, but, but to, for the, for, for the function, to function as a, as a, as a, cause you know how it is. I know as a pastor sometimes I just get, I said, no, I ain't going to give you all this information used against me. I was going to give you something to use against me. I'm not going to do that. But, but as a parent, I remember sometimes you'd be like, okay, God, dog, how many times I got to correct this? I guess I, I probably just gave away what I was going to say, but. You know, you, you sometimes you just get tired. You're like, okay, go ahead. And you know it's not right. But see, when your strength is gone, and that might be the very thing that destroys that child's life. I talked to a mother one time, and her, her, daughter, her daughter was shot and killed. Because she ding donged her about going to a party. And she said, Everything in me told me, No, you, you're a Christian, you don't need to go on a party like that. Yeah. And she was like, ah, Go ahead, just be home by. She never came home. Yeah. See, when your strength is gone, you'll fudge on something you know. There's some things you can fudge on, but some things, right. especially when something is. Scratching you on the inside, like, no, but honey, I can't explain it. I don't, I can't, I just can't explain it. But I want be mad, go sit in the room, be mad, spit on the wall, do whatever you got to do. But, but I just, I, <laughs> but when you watch this, when you, when your strength is small, the Bible says in the day of adversity, you're faint in the day of adversity when your strength is small. And so God is telling us how not to only let our strength not be small, but how to grow and be robust all the time. This is why we have so many dropouts. This is why we have so many people that, that, that don't, don't, don't get it anymore. I, I thought it would be different. Since I become a Christian, huh, since I become a Christian, I got all these problems. Yeah? You're supposed to have problems because that gives you the thermal wind from the valley that lifts you up to soar where you never soared before. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So we're not scared of problems. We're not scared of challenges. And then, oh boy. All right. Whew. Am I helping anybody? Okay, let me do this. Ooh, go to Acts chapter 4. I mean, my pastor told me one time, I asked him, I said, how do you, you've been doing this all these years, how do you keep from, I said, do you ever get burnt out? He like, boy, I can't believe you asked me that. I said, I'm sorry I did too. I said, no, burnt out. That's for people that don't walk with God. That's for people that don't know God. And that's when I found out what his regiment is. Every day. He's 80 something years old. Still do the same thing. He thought I'll never burn out. How are you gonna burn out when you were Jesus? 
He said, folks that burn out doing stuff in, you know, he'll just tell you, folks that burn out doing stuff in their own strength. But they better go get some help. Keep the fire burning. Keep the fire burning. We don't want to be casualties. We don't want to be casualties in the church, in the home, in our community. Keep the fire burning. Yeah, you're going to be hit with some stuff. But it's, okay, no hill for a climber. Okay, what did I ask you to go? Ask what? Okay, okay. Here's my last point, and I got to make it. <clears throat> Good. Listen to me carefully. You can make note of this, or I'll say it three times. Nothing can take precedence over my relationship and time with God if I want to soar. One. Nothing can take precedence over my relationship and time with God. If I want to soar, I ain't talking about exist. I can stay in the barnyard, but I'm talking about soar. Nothing can take precedence over my real. No something, no person, no no committee, no, no can take precedence over my relationship and time with God. If I want to soar, now say it with me. Nothing can take precedence in my, my relationship or my time if I want to soar. That's it. That's what he was talking about. I didn't give you my, oh shoot. Oh shoot. Let me give you my waiting, I thought my waiting notes. Waiting, what is waiting? Waiting is longing for, listening to, looking for, and living for God. It's not like sitting at the bus stop waiting for it to come. Just sitting there idle. No, 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 no. Waiting is looking for, listening to, longing for, living for Almighty God. It's living, it's living my life out and even the routines of life with a, with a, a, a confident expectation that God's going to influence my life in, in, in a very personal way. That God is involved. He's going to influence and impact my life. That's what waiting is. That's what waiting is. And then, and then listening to him speak to me. Listening to me. Tell him, look, you need to correct this. Get this out of your life. This is eating your lunch. And it's about to pop the bag. Looking. To let him lead me and guide me. Show me who, who, who to be in partnership with. Who to disconnect from. Listening. Looking. Living for him. Living. God, I cannot do this. You know, man, I get up here. I can't do what I do with, with, without him. My flesh be telling me, my natural mind tells me all kind of stuff of why I don't even qualify to be up here. I go through the same thing. I'm tempted with the same thing everybody else is tempted with. But but I'm I'm looking to him. I'm I'm an eagle. I'm an eagle. I'm an eagle. How many eagles are in here? Okay, I just want to make sure. Yeah, you're an eagle. So, you know, there's certain, certain stuff don't apply to you. You tell them, go to the bird cage. That's what that's for. That ain't me. We got a bird, what, an eagle over there on the, on the base? I'm like, man, I guess he, he was injured. Uh, but he's sitting there looking like, man, I'm just so frustrated, friendly. I'm just so frustrated. I don't know why they got me in this cage. I ain't supposed to be in no cage. He can't fly. I don't think they clipped his wing, didn't they? Huh? They were injured. Yeah. He said, I might be injured friendly, but there's still something in me that told me I ain't supposed to be in no cage. <laughs> he talked to me. You know what I'm thinking. So, so my time. You know, I know this is old school teaching right here, but there's a lot of new school stuff, but then God didn't take out. See, there's nothing like being exposed and in the presence of God. The Bible says times of refreshing come from the presence of God. Acts 4, 13, one of my favorite scriptures. 
Now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were uneducated and untrained, they marveled that, and they realized that they had been with Jesus. Now isn't that awesome? These guys weren't trained, they weren't educated, you know, in these things, but them waiting on the Lord, they've been with Jesus. And that made all the difference in the world. And the Bible lets us know, Jesus said, said what you do in secret, God said, I will reward you while you're soaring. What you do in secret, I will reward you openly. See, we need, we need spirit, we need stamina. See, other people are counting on us. Other people are counting on us. People are looking at you because they know you're Christian and they're hoping that you really pull this thing off because they, they need an example and they know they do. They want to find, I just, sometimes people, I just want to find one good Christian that I know. I know they're not perfect, but I need to find one that's just, they don't say soaring, but I'm going to say it, that's just soaring and, and, and things are producing. I can eat from their tree because of the fruit in their lives. Some of your family members are depending on you. Some of your children are depending on you. And you want to have enough stamina. Sometimes you have to carry people. Sometimes people can't carry themselves. Sometimes people are having meltdown. That's not a bad thing as long as they're talking to an eagle. Because the eagle will say, get on. Get on. Where are we going? Just get on. And they may be an eaglet because that's what the mother do too. She don't just push him out. Sometimes she put, him, put the, eagle, the eaglet on the wing. And she flying, and he, he holding on for dear life. Good God Almighty, what's going on? And, and, and then she'll just, and then she'll, she'll let him free fall, and then she'll come in and catch him. Okay, and then, now this is how you do this. And so sometimes you have people have a meltdown, you're like, okay, okay, this is how you do this. This is going to sting a little bit, but it's going to be okay. We need stamina. We need to carry some folks. We need to help pull. It takes strength to pull folks out while you holding on and you pulling folks up. Come on, somebody. But we can't do it if we don't have any strength. You need to be strong for your children. They need to see you go through stuff. Praising God the whole time. Yeah, they need to see, oh, this is how you do This is how you do it. Some of us, our record of quitting is too, it's, uh, no, they, they don't need to say, oh, Dad, I thought you were going to do that. Ah, you know what, the Lord released me. Don't give them that old bogus, that old bogus line, the Lord release you. <laughs> the Lord will help us. So I just wanted to talk to you this morning about your strength because your strength, your strength is critical, and this is how we get it. It's, it's nothing new. I know sometimes people want a shortcut. But this is critical. It's critical. Because I'm an eagle. We're going to stand and see the salvation of the Lord. The glory to God. I want you to pray with me for just a moment. Now, I know some of you, I know, I know who I'm talking to. There's people in here. I mean, I don't know your individual situation. But all of us, watch this, all of us, <laughs> can use some strengthening because even if we're where we need to be just going through the, the process of day because people people are beating doors beating a path on your cell phone calling you all the time listen if they're calling you all the time people calling you all the time they want they want your help all the time I mean you know like I, people I get very few calls with pastor I just want to see how you doing man how you do I don't get that many calls. I just want to bless you with encouragement. We don't get those many calls. And it's okay because we know how to encourage ourselves. We get some. But if people are always coming to you, listen, you, 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 something is coming away from you. I know, you know sometimes we feel good about that, but sometimes you just need to, look, put a sign out, office closed. I'm, I'm, I'm clo a solitude. What are you doing? I'm renewing my youth. Like the eagles. And so go, go find another eagle right now. But I got, to, I got to strengthen myself. Father, I thank you for strengthening us in this place this morning. Thank you. My prayer is that the word has fallen on good ground that will produce. And Father, I pray for those that are, and there are people that others go to a lot. 
but <laughs> sometimes we get weary and help us to know when to pull away and put the sign up off his clothes I don't have anything to give right now refueling and then for those fathers that don't know, this may be, may be a new thing for them. I ask you to help them to see and understand. And then, Father, I pray for those that have dropped out. Their fire has gone out. I pray that today there was a, a scratch from the match that got back into the ambers of their lives and you're the one that I really want to talk to if you're here this morning and you say pastor you know what I'm not going to lie yeah my fire has gone out I'm not nowhere near where I used to be you need to I, I, I hope that you will address that God's not mad at you I hope you will address it so that you can get back to that place and because when you're made to be an eagle and you're in the chicken coop major frustration sets in major frustration and that is not God's plan for you so I want you to bounce back carve time out in the word of God in the spirit of God in the presence of God begin to praise God your strength is not enough you need spiritual stamina. If you're always excusing yourself for why you don't do this, why you don't do that, that's a symptom that you're operating your own strength and you feel good about that, about those excuses. But God is saying, no, nah, no excuse. Hallelujah. And then for those of you who say, Pastor, I, I got religion, but I never did get Jesus. Jesus is not a religion. He is a reality. He is a relationship. And what I can guarantee you, and what I know, is that when you come to know him, life is totally different. There's a whole new level of strength, wisdom, understanding that comes into you. It's kind of like the ego. That's not of this world. And it manifests where you can dominate in this world, but you operate from another kingdom. Every person that's listening to me, if you say, Pastor, I am not saved. If you, I mean, you know you are not born again. You are not saved. I want to help you get out of the chicken barn, the barnyard. You'll never, there's something that will never make sense to you until you come into the kingdom of God. Yeah, let him connect, connect the dots. If you're out of fellowship with God, you will never have the stamina and the fire in your heart until you make that divine. I don't care how long you've been in church. There's people who've been in church for years and they're frustrated and, 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 and weak and just nothing happening because that connection has gone out. I'm here to help you like that thing today. Saints, I want you to pray with me for those who need to give their lives over to step into the kingdom.